Okay, uh, so hello everyone. My name is Sinam Sao and I'm a PhD candidate at EPFL. So uh, I'm mainly working on privacy preserving machine learning. So my talk is going to be about privacy preserving federated learning for disease associated cell classification. So it's not about protein analysis. Uh, and the motivation for my work is that training accurate and robust machine learning models requires large amounts of data and diverse and heterogeneous data, especially for, especially for healthcare or biomedical research. And this data is usually scattered around multiple institutions and data sharing is very important uh, for this kind of uh, research. So at this point, data sharing or collective training uh, in between these kind of institutions is very beneficial, but because it increases the amount of available data, thus the statistical significance of the findings or the, uh, the accuracy of the machine learning model. But it is very challenging because it needs to interface several ethics committees and IT services. There is this diverse legislation, especially if there is a cross-border data sharing. And there are the privacy protection and reg regulations such as GDPR and HIPAA that makes it difficult to share data in the plain text form. And overall, there is very little awareness, awareness about the cryptographic solutions that we can apply to these type of problems. And in this talk, I'll give a couple of examples of how we can apply cryptographic solutions so that we can enable privacy preserving collective training for biomedical data. So one of the approaches for collective training is federated learning. Uh, it is proposed by Google uh, relatively recently. And in federated learning, let's say there are multiple uh, healthcare institutions in the cross-silo setting. It can be also uh, in, in device setting where the devices are the ones that are trained the model. But let's say there are four hospitals that want to collectively train the machine learning model, but they don't want to share their data. What federated learning enables is that uh, these hospitals or healthcare institutions can keep their data and they can perform several local iterations of the machine learning on their local data and then uh, compute the local gradients and these gradients are then aggregated into a global model through a central server. And this goes on for several training iterations. So it looks like it's a cool uh, solution for not data sharing because the data uh, key is kept in the local premises, right? However, the several works show that the client's model updates, these gradients that are communicated in the federated learning system, update, uh, leak information about their local data. And these uh, papers show this kind of leakage uh, on the attacks that are performed on the gradients through either membership inference attacks or user level privacy leakage uh, kind of attacks. So to mitigate this kind of leakage in the federated learning, um, we do two projects. The first one is Poseidon, which is a generic framework for privacy preserving federated learning. And the second one is an application of Poseidon for a single cell analysis to uh, disease associated cell classification. So uh, before going into Poseidon, I'd like to give a couple of uh, building blocks. The first one is homomorphic encryption. It's a method for secure two party computations. It's a magical way to compute several functions under encryption on the encrypted data without seeing the data. So let's say there are Alice and Bob, and Alice needs to send some data to Bob for, for the evaluation of some function f, but the data is private. So Alice generates the cryptographic keys, encrypts the data, sends the encrypted data for the evaluation of function f, and then this function f is computed on the encrypted data without seeing the data. And then Bob can also not see the end result of the function f, send it back to Alice, and only Alice can decrypt the end result. So this is for two-party computation, secure two-party computation, but what if there are more than two parties? So for this, we rely on something called multi-party homomorphic encryption, where there is a public collective key that is used for the encryption, and that is known by all the parties in the system, but the corresponding secret key is distributed among the parties 
such that the decryption of any ciphertext requires collaboration between the parties. In this way, MAT enables the distributed trust in between these parties, a scalable computation, which I'll show later in the evaluation, and balanced computation and communication overheads, which is really important for homomorphic encryption-based applications. And in our work, we rely on an MHC uh, variant of a MHC variant that is a CKKS variant, which is a specific encry encryption scheme, and it provides uh, security against post-quantum attacks too. And lastly, uh, the scheme that we rely on enables efficient collaborative bootstrapping uh, for refreshing the ciphertext. And what is this bootstrapping? It is very important for homomorphic encryption-based uh, applications because in CKKS encryption scheme that we rely on, a fresh ciphertext comes with an initial level. And then after performing several multiplications on this ciphertext, the level decreases. And it comes to a point where you need to bootstrap the ciphertext so that it goes back to the initial level so that you can continue performing operations on that ciphertext. And the reason for that is that there is a noise part in, the, in a, each ciphertext. And when you multiply two ciphertexts, the noise increases. So in Poseidon, uh, in our system and threat model, there are N data providers, N uh, healthcare institutions, each locally holding its own data as in the federated learning system. To, and they want to train a collective uh, machine learning model without leaking any information through the, their uh, computed gradients or these intermediate values. And we assume that there is a querier, which is the end user, that queries the model and obtains the prediction result on its own evaluation data. And we rely on a passive adversary model with collusions of up to n minus one parties. What it means is that even though n minus one parties collude in the system, they cannot infer any information about the data or the model, uh, the machine learning model that is trained because they're all under encryption. And we achieve this by relying on this multi-party homomorphic encryption that I just mentioned. So let me give the overview of our solution. It starts with the setup phase where the, let's say, four hospitals or healthcare institutions want to collectively train a, a machine learning model. They start with generating the cryptographic keys and then they generate the model, initialize the machine learning model and they encrypt this model and after this step, the model is always under encryption. It is never decrypted and any um, intermediate value that is uh, communicated in these parties are still under encryption. And after the model initialization, each party performs several local computation on its own data with the encrypted model to compute the encrypted gradients. And then these gradients are then aggregated into a global model through several training iterations. And after the training, the healthcare institutions or hospitals can decrypt the model for further analysis or downstream analysis, or they can still keep the model under encryption. And in either case, we assume that there is a query that is the holder of its own public and secret key. And the query can encrypt its own evaluation data, send it to one of the parties for the evaluation of the machine learning model, and the party cannot see the querier's data and the querier cannot see the model and the end result can, can, on, can only be decrypted by the querier. So the main contributions of this project are quite uh, crypto related, but I just wanted to give some highlights here. So we introduced multiple optimizations in the gradient descent process to make it crypto amenable because several functions, for example, nonlinear functions are not computable under encryption. For this, we use least squares approximation or several other approximations to approximate uh, the activation functions in the neural network to polynomials. We define problem-specific packing scheme, which is really important for homomorphic encryption uh, applications, again, because it enables single instruction multiple data operations, so it increases the parallelization. And we introduce several functions to distributed bootstrapping that I just mentioned. Lastly, we link the parameterization of the machine learning and cryptography because usually choosing the cryptographic parameters is a really tedious task. 
So now I'd like to show the mention how we apply Poseidon and these kind of systems in the single cell analysis. So single cell analysis play a vital role in the biology uh, for discovering mechanisms, but the number of samples is typically low at each individual uh, study center or healthcare institution. So either data sharing or collaboration is needed between these institutions, but it's usually really difficult to share this type of data. So that's why uh, to evaluate our systems, such as Poseidon, within the framework of this single cell analysis, we train a convolutional neural network that's called CellCNN that was published in the literature in Nature Communications. And uh, we try to replicate the results of this CellCNN in a privacy preserving and federated setting. And the CellCNN comprises uh, convolution pooling and dense layers and we perform the training under encryption. So remember our solution overview. Uh, it means that in the local computation phase, we need to train a convolutional neural network that is very specific, and it means that we can further optimize the operations under encryption. And in this project, we do that, basically. So to evaluate our system uh, and to show the feasibility of this under encryption uh, training, we use several single cell data sets, but I'll just give the first one, cytomegalovirus infection one, and we compare our classification accuracy in a privacy preserving federated setting under encryption with the centralized data, non-encrypted baseline, which is cell CNN. So here on the left plot, there is the phenotype classification, and on the right, which is a multi-cell classification for cytomegalovirus infection, and the red boxes show the baseline, which is centralized cell CNN training. The blue ones show uh, our training with price cell in two, three, and five parties. Uh, and the local ones, the green ones, show that there are still two, three, or five parties, but they don't collaborate with others, and they just train their own machine learning model. So what we observe is that the takeaway from these plots is that price cell achieves really similar accuracy to the baseline, but there is always an accuracy gain from the local training, uh, which shows us the significance of collaboration in these kind of settings. So I guess I can skip this one because of the time, but uh, we also evaluate the scalability of uh, price cell with the increasing number of parties, number of data samples, features, and filters. And we observe that uh, with increasing number of parties when the number of global samples is kept uh, the same, we observe a decrease in the runtime because it increases the parallel computation in between the parties. When, the, when we also increase the data samples while increasing the number of parties, we see that the communication of price cell increases linearly, which is really important for homomorphic encryption-based or MPC-based works. Um, in the third plot, we see a linear increase with the increasing data samples that are globally. And in the uh, last ones, uh, we see that with increasing number of features and increasing number of filters in the convolutional neural network, the uh, runtime remains almost constant up until some point. And after that, we see a linear increase. And this is because we need to increase the cryptographic parameters to enable the computation of these type of parameters under encryption. So as a conclusion, we apply multi-party homomorphic encryption to perform the computations without seeing the data. So there is no need to send the data of the medical institutions to each other. And uh, we rely on decentralized trust. Each party trusts only themselves for the, uh, for the protection of their data. There is no need to transfer the data, and the model is always under encryption in the federated learning setting. And we show that uh, the accuracy that we achieve with PriceL is really close to non-secure and uh, centralized baseline. And the scale to analysis shows that it scales nicely and linearly with the increasing number of parties. So thank you, and I'd be happy to answer any questions.